guys welcome or welcome back to my channel and happy 2022 i am super excited to be here with y'all i've been sick for a couple of weeks so i decided to take some time off but i am back and i'm super pumped to start sharing all of my ideas and projects with you for this year so a couple of weeks ago you guys saw me do a diy kitchen island and you're gonna want to catch up if you missed that video i will have it down in the description for you so you can catch up because this is part two of that video series where I am making over my kitchen. Now, originally this was supposed to be a two part video series, but I ran into an issue. I realized that when I received my new fridge, it didn't fit in the opening of the over the fridge cabinet. So I decided to go ahead and build my own so that I could match them as close as possible to the existing base cabinets that I have over by like the sink and the stove. Now, before we get started, I do wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. You guys have heard me talk about Skillshare before because I truly enjoy utilizing their site for me to find new ways to continue to learn, grow, and connect through creativity. For those of you who haven't heard, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members across 150 countries. It's a place to get inspired, learn new skills, or even enhance your current skills. I first discovered Skillshare over three months ago and at that time to classes offered by Mike Farty and Michael Carter Napricorn on productivity habits and time management. Since then, I've dived into a couple of other classes offered by Ali Abdul, like how to organize your workflow to maximize productivity. I'm really excited to continue to learn how I can maximize my time and energy by being more productive and in balancing everyday tasks. I'm enjoying putting what I've learned into action and seeing how helpful it has been for me. So let 2022 be the year you invest in yourself and your personal growth with the help of Skillshare. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description of this video will get a one month free trial. Now let's go ahead and get building. I began by ripping down my plywood sheets to the correct size I needed. I'm using half inch birch and maple plywood. I used the combination simply for the fact that half inch and three quarter inch cabinet grade plywood is hard to come by right now. I'm assuming that a lot of people have the same idea of building their own stuff. I'm not going to discuss the exact measurements because this will likely be different for you since not all kitchens are the same. In order to build the box, I created pocket holes on the smaller top and bottom pieces. I also ripped down a few 3 inch support boards from the left over plywood at the same width as the top and bottom so that I could later use those to attach to the walls and studs. So here's the silly mistake that I just made. I made pocket holes going along the shorter end but this is going on the side of the cabinet so my pocket holes should have gone here because the sides of the cabinet are gonna be here, not up here. These are the front and the back. So, silly mistake, mistakes that I make so that you won't make them, but um, yeah, things don't always go perfect, but you won't be able to see it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and make pocket holes where I'm supposed to. I attached the top and bottom with the pocket hole screws and some wood glue. You don't necessarily have to use glue, but I don't intend on ever taking these apart or moving them, so I chose to use glue as well. I did a shelf in the middle, but made sure to have it be shorter than the top and bottom boards or the overall depth of the cabinet to make things more accessible when reaching to the back. I ironed on some edge banding to cover the raw edge of the plywood. I then attached the three support boards on the opposite sides as well. The 
back, I ripped down a quarter inch plywood sheet and Brad nailed it on. I did the same thing to create the second box, but I didn't add any additional support pieces because I used the half inch plywood all the way around. The reason for this was because this will be the side that will not be against the wall and I will be building doors to have it open on the widest part. This is where I will be keeping my brooms, vacuums, etc. The middle box that will join them together was built like the first box with support pieces and the quarter inch backing nailed on. Now you can choose to or choose not to add a face frame to your cabinets and I chose to simply because my original base cabinets have them. It does require more material, therefore more money, so just keep that in mind. If you do choose to add a face frame, be sure to count for them in your overall dimensions when cutting everything out. I built the face frames to be about an eighth of an inch offset all around except for the middle cabinet. For that one, I made sure the bottom rail would be one and a half inches offset since it was the one directly above the fridge. I attached them together by creating pocket holes on the rails and then attached them to the boxes with wood glue and brad nails. Because the cabinets were shorter than I prefer, but the longest that I could build them in order to send them up inside, I built a separate base out of 2x4s. And once I set the cabinets on top of the bases, I went ahead and attached the face fronts. Using some of my manager's washable paint, I marked the outlet so that I could get an accurate cutout. Remember, I am going to be using this for my vacuum, so I wanted to be able to charge them while they sat in the cabinet. I used my jigsaw, but using an oscillating tool would have been a bit faster and perhaps a little bit straighter.
I filled in any of the nail holes on the face frames before priming and painting. And to prime, I used a foam roller and Kills 2 primer. Okay, so I wanted to show you before I got started um, with the first coat of paint. As you can see here, this is where I'm going to be adding the faux doors. Um, I'm basically going to build the same doors as this side, but on this side, we're not going to be able to open them because apparently this is going to be the actual opening. So this will have functional doors on this side, so that way I can be able to put my stick vacuum, my broom, that sort of stuff there. So this side is just for decorative purposes. I'm intending to put faux doors there so that way it looks the same on both sides um, and it wouldn't be like completely flat. <clears throat> the other thing I wanted to mention before, I'll come up here and show you before we get started on this first coat of paint is how I joined the face frames here. So in order to join the face frames, all I did was drill, drill a pilot hole and attach them with a three inch long screw. Did one there as well. Same thing. Oh, actually did it on this side. Same thing on this side as well as down here. So. I did do some additional support well, there and there as well as in here just to help grip those two together. These are all screwed into the wall. So I've got my screws screwed into the wall there. And then of course you saw me do these where I fastened those to the wall. So this is the paint that I am going to be using. Um, this is leftover paint from when we had our cabinets built and painted professionally. Um, we had some leftover. They left the can with us. This is about three quarters of the way full. It's about here. Um, so yeah, I'll be using the exact same one. It's going to be the exact same color as these cabinets. So let's get to it. Finally, it was time to build the doors. I measured and cut my styles and rows out of 1x3 pine boards. Now you could definitely use something a bit less expensive or even rip down your own, but I decided not to. Afterwards, I moved on to making the grooves, and for this I switched my single blade on my table saw to a dado blade at a quarter inch. Now Training Hands Academy has a great video on how to achieve the same outcome with a single blade if you don't have the dado blade or a router table. After all of my boards had the grooves, I moved on to creating the tenons by adding a chipper blade to make it 3 8 of an inch thick. I used the scrap to fine tune before passing all of my rails through on both ends.
My manager woke up so I went ahead and placed the baseboards back before calling it a day. To put my doors together, I simply added glue to the tenons and slid a quarter inch plywood in the groove before clamping them together. Now once the glue was set, I removed the clamps and wood filled any small gaps I had and this would be a great time to caulk all of the seams to prep for primer and paint. I used my Craig hinge jig for concealed hinges and followed the recommended manufacturer settings and created the holes. Remember that these doors are technically faux doors, so I attach them with the brad nails directly to the front. My other doors are attached using the hinges. Once they were all in place, I went ahead and foam rolled two coats of the paint. Now remember, I had already primed at this point, but I didn't show you the process because I would already shown you me priming the base. Because it's an oil-based paint, I did not want to spray it, but I also was crunched for time, so I figured foam rolling would have to do. And in all honesty, you can see that you can achieve great results without having to spray it if you don't have a sprayer. Now let's remember what we first started with and what we created and what it looks like now. I hope you found this video helpful if you've been thinking about building your own over the fridge cabinets but didn't know where to start or what to do. Hopefully this gave you somewhat of an idea of what you could possibly make. I've never done this before, it's not perfect, um, but I learned new techniques and I am really proud of how it turned out and I know that if I've never done this before and I was able to do it, I know that you can too. I want to thank y'all for watching today's video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss any future uploads and turn on your post notification bell so you're notified every single time I upload a new video because you're not going to want to miss this series where I finish off this kitchen makeover. I love y'all. Be kind and I'll see y'all next week. Bye.